By now, you may know that, despite decades of previous thinking, diabetes does not have to be a life or death sentence. Yes, you can better manage and even prevent diabetes. But how exactly? Welcome to another diabetes discussion. Don't forget to like this vid and subscribe to our channel. Plus, coming up, we're giving away two free gifts. But right now, it's time to give you the 20 best tips to beat diabetes. Ready? Let's get to it. Tip number 20. Cut down on the alcohol. Alcohol, consumed in moderation, is okay for most people. In fact, many medical experts say that drinking a glass of red wine each night can give you positive health effects. But alcohol may interfere with certain diabetes medications. Plus, any alcoholic beverage will contain a significant amount of sugar and may cause your glucose levels to spike. At the end of the day, alcoholic beverages won't supply you much of any nutrients, but they will give you a ton of calories. In fact, drinking a pint of 5% alcoholic beer is basically equivalent to eating two slices of white bread. And eating two slices of white bread is like eating candy. So skip the alcohol as much as possible. And go for the less fun but infinitely more healthy option, water. Tip number 19. Get a glucometer. If you've been diagnosed with diabetes, chances are your doctor has already told you to purchase this device. And many doctors and nutritionists recommend that type 1, type 2, and even pre-diabetics check their blood sugar levels throughout the day. Knowing your blood sugar levels can help you manage your condition by letting you know if a food you've just eaten has negatively impacted your levels. And it will help you prepare for what you put on your plate for your next meal. Most glucometers are sold for under $50, so they are a generally inexpensive but invaluable tool to incorporate into your anti-diabetes lifestyle. Tip number 18 take a short walk after each meal. New research suggests that postprandial walks, that is, walking after meals, can help stabilize your blood sugar levels. Many physical fitness experts and doctors agree that a 20 to 25 minute walk can be quite effective, but even only 10 minutes of brisk walking after a meal can still have a positive impact on your glucose levels. In fact, a brisk 10-minute walk after a meal has been shown to be more effective for lowering and balancing blood sugar levels than exercising at different times of the day. So don't just move from your dinner table to the couch or hop right in bed. Grab your dog and go for a refreshing walk after your lunch or your dinner. It'll be good for you and your fur baby. Tip number 17. Lift weights. Sure, you're well aware already that weightlifting can help you bulk up. But lifting weights can have dramatic positive effects for your health, not just your appearance. The more muscle you have, the better your insulin will work. Increasing your lean muscle mass means you'll burn calories at a faster rate, which can help stabilize your blood sugar levels in a more effective manner. And it will make your muscle cells more sensitive to insulin. Strengthening your muscles can also help you better control your blood pressure, lower your risk of cardiovascular disease, increase your bone density, and improve your cholesterol levels. Tip number 16. Experiment with meal frequency. Most nutritionists believe that you can stabilize your blood sugar levels either by eating five to six small meals a day, or two to three larger meals per day. As it turns out, everyone's body and metabolism is different. What works for one person may not work for another. Many diabetics have reported that eating four to six small healthy snacks throughout the day works best for helping them fight cravings and for maintaining steady glucose levels. But some studies have shown that eating six small meals does not help hunger control and actually might cause you to eat an overall larger volume of food than if you'd just eaten your three typical meals. So it's up to you to experiment and figure out which way of eating will work best for your body. 
Our top 15 tips to beat diabetes are coming up. But right now, you can unlock even more diabetes fighting knowledge just by clicking the link in the description below. We'll tell you more and how you can receive two free gifts later in this video. Tip number 15, shed the salt. Though salt does not negatively affect your blood sugar levels, eating excessive quantities of salt has been shown to increase the risk of high blood pressure, which is linked to heart disease, stroke, and diabetes. Simply be mindful of how much salt you're adding to your meals, or take a close look at the nutrition labels of any packaged foods you purchase. Go for about one teaspoon's worth of salt per day. That equals about six grams. Some ways to make sure that you don't overdo it on the salt are to cut back on buying packaged foods, cook more meals from scratch, and avoid adding extra salt to meals you get at restaurants. Tip number 14, cut down on your red meat. The latest research shows that eating a diet high in red meat will increase your risk of developing diabetes. There are many factors for this, one simply being that eating a lot of large portions of red meat can add to your weight. But scientists recently discovered that the high iron contents in red meat may increase oxidative stress in your body, which can lower your insulin sensitivity. Plus, additional studies have showed a link between high red meat consumption and certain forms of cancer. However, red meat can still provide many important nutrients, like protein and vitamin B12. Therefore, while most nutritionists and doctors argue that while red meat can have a place in your diet, you should avoid eating more than 70 grams of red meat per day. That's about equivalent to two sausages. We recommend limiting your red meat to two meals per week. Tip number 13 switch to vegetable-based pastas. By now, you probably know that most traditional pastas are made with white flour and are therefore extremely starchy. They'll spike your blood sugar in a matter of minutes, and they don't provide your body with much of any fiber. But this doesn't mean you have to go through life deprived of all your favorite pasta dishes. Did you know that certain vegetables, like carrots, squash, and even zucchini, can be used to create amazing pasta noodles? Using vegetable-based noodles, you'll ensure that your plate is loaded with an excellent amount of healthy carbohydrates and fiber. And you'll cut down on that extra sugar found in white flour pastas. All you need is a spiralizer, or even just a peeler, to create the noodles. In fact, many grocery stores and supermarkets already carry pre-spiralized vegetable-based pasta noodles. Instead of boiling your noodles, simply saute them with a little bit of olive oil. After all, the best pastas are all about the sauces. So knock yourself out creating heart-healthy, nutrient-rich sauces from home, like tomato garlic red sauce. Tip number 12. Eat two to four servings of fruit per day. Fruit is nature's candy. It will give you a strong dose of sugar, but if you pick the right fruits and eat them the right way, you'll also be getting a variety of essential vitamins, antioxidants, and fiber. Whole fruits are low calorie, but they will help you feel fuller quicker. Certain fruits, like bananas, may raise your blood sugar levels higher and quicker than other fruits, like apples. So, do some research to find out which fruits may be best for you. For example, some studies have concluded that eating grapes, blueberries, and apples can help you lower your risk for developing type 2 diabetes. But no matter what, most any fruit eaten whole without being juiced or added to other high sugar foods like cereals or bread will have positive health benefits, like helping with weight management, reducing cardiovascular disease risk, and lowering your blood pressure. So in general, fruits can be added to your plate for most every meal. Simply go for about two to four servings of fruit per day because overdoing it on the fruit can supply your body with an overabundance of carbs. An apple or other fruits that are about the size of your fist, like a peach or a pear, for example, count as one serving. Larger fruits, like mangoes, will count as two servings. 
but you can eat up to four strawberries or 16 grapes and count those as one serving of fruit. Tip number 11. Add antioxidant-rich spices and herbs to your meal. Sometimes the biggest health benefits come in the smallest packages. You can dramatically better your nutrition simply by adding a few pinches of spice to your meals. Ginger, turmeric, garlic, cinnamon, and many other spices and herbs can help you manage glucose levels, fight against oxidative damage, and improve your heart health. Ginger has been shown to improve insulin sensitivity and cholesterol levels. Try a teaspoon of grated ginger in your soups or stir fries, or make yourself some ginger tea. Turmeric can help you control high blood sugar, and it has excellent anti-inflammatory properties. Use a pinch or two on your chicken, or add a bit to your scrambled eggs. You can also include turmeric in a variety of teas or veggie smoothies. Garlic can also help you better control your glucose levels and fight against free radical damage. It's also widely used to improve heart health. Add minced garlic to a wide variety of soups, salsas, or other meals. And if you're really brave, you could simply eat about two garlic cloves on an empty stomach. But beyond these spices and herbs, there's an entire rainbow of diabetes-fighting, heart-healthy herbs and spices you can easily work into your meals. Our top 10 best tips to beat diabetes are coming up. Don't forget to click the link in the description below to get free access to our new book, Superfoods for Diabetics, and episode one of our eight-part series, That Diabetes Documentary. You'll discover a world of diabetes-fighting knowledge in each of these two amazing free gifts. Now, back to the list. Our top 10 tip to beat diabetes is switch to 100% whole grain or sprouted grain breads. Naturally, typical sliced white bread is widely known to be very unhelpful if you're worried about diabetes. Some nutritionists even say that white bread affects your body in the same way that candy affects your body. But certain whole grain or sprouted grain breads are a much safer bet if you just can't survive without your lunchtime sandwiches. They contain beneficial nutrients and good amounts of fiber to slow your insulin response. Try pumpernickel or sourdough breads as well. Sourdough is long fermented, which produces acetic acid. Acetic acid has been shown to help lower blood sugar. Pumpernickel is created by using a sourdough starter, so it may provide some positive health benefits as well. Just make sure to check the labels of these breads first to make sure they don't contain added sugars or other hidden ingredients. Tip number nine. Buy seasonal produce. Most people realize that fruits and especially vegetables are essential to have on your plate for every meal. But a harsh reality is that a lot of high quality produce can be expensive, especially if you're looking to buy, say, tomatoes in the dead of winter. But what if you could have a good amount of great quality produce at inexpensive prices all year long? You can. Try using your freezer. You can find amazing produce at unbeatable prices as long as you buy them in season. So seek out the most competitively priced farmer's market stalls or organic produce stores in your area and buy extra kale, spinach, broccoli, sweet potatoes, chopped onions, apples, berries, and much more. And then bag up your extras and toss them in your freezer. Now you'll have healthy, low-cost produce for months to come. Tip number eight, use a meal kit delivery service. You've probably heard of services like Blue Apron or Every Plate. Most of these services offer you a variety of weekly meal plans meant to feed the entire family, all with quality produce and other natural ingredients. Finding the right meal kit delivery service means that not only will you be supplied with healthy ingredients and the recipes in which to use them, you'll also actually end up saving money. Most anyone who shops at a grocery store buys food in bulk, unsure of what exactly they'll cook. And often, much of that food ends up going to waste. But with food kit delivery services, they supply the exact amount of produce you'll need. 
Plus, by cutting down on your trips to the grocery store, you'll reduce the amount of unhealthy, high-sugar snack foods you may inevitably be tempted to normally purchase. All in all, meal kit delivery services can add money back to your wallet and will help you cook healthy for every meal. Tip number seven, count your carbs. Sure, counting calories or amounts of food sounds unsustainable. Who wants to use math at the dinner table? But taking stock of the carbohydrates you eat can help you learn which foods negatively affect your blood sugar the most and can help you better manage both your glucose levels and your weight. Counting carbohydrates is especially important if you are type 1 diabetic, so you can accurately adjust your insulin depending on what you eat. Many doctors say to keep your total carb count per meal to between 45 and 60 grams, or about 20 grams per snack. If you're buying a packaged product, you can easily determine how many carbs you're about to consume by looking at the total carbohydrate number listed on the nutrition label. If you're eating unpackaged fruits or vegetables, you can quickly look up their specific carb counts online. But in simple terms, any single serving of a veggie, fruit, or milk will be about 15 grams worth of carbohydrate. Tip number six. Get 30 minutes of physical activity per day. New research shows that there doesn't seem to be much added health benefit to adding extra time to your normal workout routine. 30 minutes or so of moderate to heavy aerobic or anaerobic exercise each day will get you where you need to go. Many doctors believe a total of 150 minutes of physical activity per week is enough for anyone to properly increase heart health, strengthen your muscles, expand your lung capacity, aid in better sleep, improve your memory, and even help you feel happier. But recent studies show that 30 minutes of moderate physical activity works just as well as doing a full hour of exercise when it comes to weight loss. So, adding that extra half an hour won't necessarily equate to you losing more weight. Simply go for 30 continuous minutes of brisk walking, swimming, cycling, even dancing, or completing some house chores can do the trick. Tip number five. Eat oily, omega-3 rich fish at least twice per week. Eating omega-3 fatty acid rich foods on a regular basis has been shown to increase insulin sensitivity, as well as many other health benefits, from reducing the risk of cardiovascular disease to fighting against inflammation to lowering rates of depression. And oily, lean protein fish like salmon, tuna, and mackerel are excellent at delivering those omega-3 fats to your body. They'll also give you that needed protein and vitamin D. So many nutritionists and doctors are recommending that type 2 diabetics eat at least two portions of these types of fish per week. But some studies showed that older people who ate omega-3 rich fish up to seven times per week received even better health benefits, like significant drops in triglyceride levels. Tip number four. Eat half a plate of non-starchy vegetables in each meal. This one is obvious, but also integral to bettering your health and fighting diabetes. Most nutritionists believe that filling at least half of your plate with vegetables, especially non-starchy vegetables, will give you your needed nutrients, low glycemic carbohydrates, and fiber content. Non-starchy vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower, asparagus, and cabbage contain about 25 calories and 5 grams of carbs, but they also come loaded with 3 grams of fiber and up to 2 grams of protein per cup. By filling half of your plate with these nutrient-dense veggies, you'll ensure that you don't overdo it on your other high-calorie foods. Try to eat three servings of one cup of raw or half a cup of cooked vegetables each day. And definitely stock up on your non-starchy veggies at the peaks of their seasons. Saute them in a bit of extra virgin olive oil and freeze extras so you can take advantage of these essential ingredients all year long. Tip number three, allow yourself small treats once a week. Yes, sugary treats will negatively affect your glucose levels and can add on the pounds. 
But most doctors and nutritionists agree that no matter your diabetes diagnosis, you need to allow yourself small indulgences every once in a blue moon. The trick is to find unprocessed, unpackaged sweets where possible, and to watch your portions and the frequency of eating these treats. So it's okay to have a few pieces of pineapple, or some unsweetened Greek yogurt with berries, or a small size piece of dark chocolate, up to a few times per week at most. Don't be too afraid to have a slice of cake at a friend's birthday party, but do your best to keep it to just one slice. And make sure to pair your sweets with some protein, like chicken, fish, or even some string cheese, to lessen your insulin response. In other words, have your small indulgences, but eat them responsibly and after a healthy meal. The goal is to keep your cravings in check, but you never want to find yourself binging on these high sugar foods. So avoid the chips, crackers, and other packaged products, and find ways to have your treats on the go instead of in front of the TV. Tip number two cut down on processed sugar intake. Of course, even though we recommend allowing yourself those small snacks every once in a while, your true aim is to dramatically cut back on your processed sugar intake in general. That means avoiding the soda, potato chip, and cookie aisles at your grocery store. Skip the white breads, leave that tub of ice cream in the supermarket freezer, and just say no to those empty calorie fast food meals. Habit changing is extremely difficult. So if you need to wean yourself off of a diet high in packaged added sugar products, give yourself a month to gradually lower the amount of these foods. Eventually your body will adjust to your healthier, more natural lifestyle. And soon you'll be craving whole fruits, vegetables, natural sources of fat and protein. And you'll leave those old high sugar food cravings in the dust for good. Well, we've made it to our final tip to beat diabetes. Don't forget to discover more tips to fight diabetes and improve your health by checking out the complete Diabetes Smarts program. To start your journey on a path to better blood sugar control, just click the link below. And now, the number one tip to beat diabetes is watch your portions. In America, and in fact, the world over, Average sizes of our plates and our food have ballooned. In fact, the average frozen pizza size has increased from 200 grams to 250 grams in the last two decades alone. Potato chip bags, muffin sizes, even your average bagel has increased in size within the last few years. In general, there is simply more food for us to eat than ever before. So doctors and nutritionists agree that the key to balancing your blood sugar, losing weight, and maintaining a healthy lifestyle is as much about the amount of food you eat as it is the type of food you eat. Sometimes someone can eat the best quality, most wholesome foods and still be overweight and generally unhealthy. Why? Chances are they are eating too much food. So we recommend limiting your meal portions to only one plate of food. That means no more second helpings. It also means understanding that some portion sizes you assumed were healthy are in fact simply too much food. For example, if you're filling your entire plate with rice, that is just too much. A single serving of pasta should be no larger than half a tennis ball. And one serving of meat should actually be no larger or thicker than a deck of cards. That may prove difficult for you at first, but our bodies are resilient and they learn. If you cut back on your portions, your first few meals may leave you feeling hungry, but soon your stomach will adjust and you'll begin to feel fuller quicker in no time at all. Well, that's our list for the 20 best tips to beat diabetes, lose weight, and for maintaining a healthy lifestyle for years to come. If you have any other tips you think are better, definitely let us know in the comment section below. And also be sure to like this vid and subscribe to the Diabetes Smarts channel so you can be the first to watch more vids just like this. We're releasing new content each week. 
Thanks for watching and have a happy and healthy day.